today I'm here with composer Matt Barnson. Matt, thank you so much for having us. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for coming over. So the first question we like to talk about on this program is how do you take your popcorn? Um, I don't eat popcorn that much, actually. No. Uh, I, I burnt some uh, a little while ago in the microwave and it left such an atrocious <laughs> smell in my apartment for so long that uh, I cut it. Cut oh, it from no. my diet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, for the next episode, I'll have to show you how to make popcorn. <laughs> In the microwave. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that we, we our kettle corn are trying to do is create concerts that are a bit different, a bit kind of laid back experience. Mm -hmm. And we're just wondering if you could talk about any experiences you've had outside of a traditional concert setting that were meaningful to you. I, I think it's hard. I mean, there's there's music that one hears in churches, there's music that one hears in concert halls, and then there's uh, the pop music which has its own traditions of, of listening to things. So I, I, I'm I skeptical of the concept of quote, a, 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 a non-traditional concert mm -hmm. uh, setting because it, it, it seems that it's not so much as non-traditional as, as crossing certain genres mm -hmm. that are more or less effective. Um, I mean, in a way, when we talk about concerts that are outside of the normal tradition, mm -hmm. a lot of it is a matter of of reaching out to other traditions and reaching out to older traditions. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the opera tradition in Mozart's time is, is very different from the way the Met is today. Definitely. And uh, it's interesting to have a mix of those things. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what I have seen that was one of the best concerts I've seen in New York period was Loft Opera. Uh, they did, uh, what was the... It was some bel canto, uh, Lucrezia Borgia, mm. um, and they did it in a loft just down the street. So here in in Bushwick, and that was spectacular. That was essentially everybody was. Uh, the opera was happening. If you can imagine, just I was sitting on the floor. The opera was happening here, mm. and to the point where I was nearly, uh, you know, run over by various uh, stagings going mm. on, and it was that was spectacular, and it. Uh, I've never seen that enthusiastic of a crowd, and I think it's because everybody was just nearly right in the middle of the opera. Great singing, great playing. Um, that's right. I, th I think that there's there's a non-traditional venue that I think was really, really good, and they are a, a really, really great group. Yeah. So one thing that I find interesting is the context in which people listen to music, into it, which musicians listen to music mm -hmm. outside of these concerts. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, in your day-to-day -day life, what, what is, where do you listen to music and what's, how does that work for you? Um, I listen to music whenever I'm on the go. Uh, I listen to music in the subway and when I'm walking around. Um, I think I, I'm, I'm sensitive to noise in an apartment building, so it's, it's rare that I am listening to music at the volume I like um, in my apartment. Because you don't want to bother your neighbors? I don't want to bother my neighbors, and my neighbors are nice enough not to uh, bother me. So mm. we have a nice uh, detente in that <laughs> sense. Um, well, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the piece that Hannah and Mike are playing on our concert, and also just about that whole set in general. So um, probably for the last uh, five or six years, I've written really big pieces. Um, the shortest being around maybe 23, 24 minutes, but a couple have gotten up to the 50 minute length. Uh, and I thought um, we, we, when, when Mike and Hannah asked me to write this piece several years ago, um, I thought, well, this would kind of be fun just to write um, short pieces. But I think one of the things with short pieces for me is that you've got to say everything you need to say in a few minutes. And that's a scary concept for me. So what became one short piece did, wouldn't do. And so we needed two short pieces and three short pieces. And so I've essentially written a suite of about nine pieces, which has now lasts nearly 50 minutes. <laughs> um, there's, there's a sense in this, in this fantastic book on dance and the music of Bach. Uh, that talks about the metrical 
patterns, even, even when they're the same meter, the different um, uh, structures in Baroque dances. So I wanted to make up my own Baroque dances that were um, similar, but uh, different in some sense, mm -hmm. usually metrically. And so I have a couple pieces that are, that are not a bore or mm -hmm. not a gavotte. Um, that I wanted to just play around with. So it is, it is a little bit of fan fiction uh, in, in that sense. Um, and the piece that Hannah and Mike are going to play is the aria from that. Yeah. It, it uh, fits in with their program as to uh, what they want it to be in that it's, in that it's lyrical, it's slow. Mm. Um, most, there aren't that many slow uh, percussion pieces. That's true and uh, definitely not for marimba, uh, but certainly they don't have any slow pieces in their repertoire. So because that's what they need, that's what they're, that's what they're <laughs> gonna do. And that was one of the purposes of this suite, which was to say, look, I realized that uh, probably most composers will be using a larger percussion setup. Mm. Um, I wanna create this piece that is uh, flexible, that it can be as long as you want it to be, and it only requires a marimba, which tends to be in, a lot of percussion setups already, right? Uh, so, so it could be very, very simple. Yeah. Well, Matt, thank you so much for having us thank over. Thank you, it's Alex. It's been a pleasure talking. Yeah.